Welcome to The Stream. I'm Heidi Jo Castro. It's now a year since Al Jazeera correspondent Shireen Abu Akleh was killed by Israeli forces in the occupied West Bank, and no one has been held to account. As the fight for justice continues, Palestinian journalists continue to run the risk of assault and detention by Israel. Today, a panel of reporters reflects on Shireen's inspirational legacy and talk to me about the challenges they face while covering the realities of Palestinian life. Joining today's conversation, Jalal Abu Qatar is a journalist based in Israeli-occupied East Jerusalem. Bira Sajwari is a journalist and writer who has reported on the experiences of Palestinians living in Israel. She is in the occupied West Bank city of Ramallah. And Maram Humaid is an Al Jazeera reporter based in the besieged Gaza Strip. Hello, everyone. I cannot believe it has already been a year since Shireen's killing, and really we are not that much closer to finding justice for her. But first I want to ask you what, how people who she gave voice to for so many years, how they are remembering her on the anniversary of her death. We'll go to you first, Jalal, in occupied East Jerusalem. Um, hi, thank you for having us, first of all. Um, it's really hard to believe that it's been a year um, anyone who's known Shireen, who's ever worked with Shireen, and especially her colleagues who've actually worked with her on the field and have shared uh, a lot of time, and the, the, the ones who were close to her, um, we, we're, we're, not, we're not over this grief. We know there is not, been, no one's been held accountable, justice has not been served, but we are still marking this anniversary. It's been a year since we've lost Shireen. Uh, it's you know, there's been a lot of events, uh, a lot of groups coming out to commemorate uh, Shireen's legacy. Um, I've seen that there's been the announcement of a museum and uh, an educational institution for journalism. It's going to be sponsored by Al Jazeera and will be opening in Ramallah. There was a, uh, there was a declaration of this um, on the anniversary of Shireen's death. And there's been reports coming out that highlight Israel's um, repeated pattern in killing journalists and not a single soldier would be held accountable for the targeting and killing of Palestinian journalists. Mm. Uh, people from all over are commemorating her legacy uh, and remembering Shireen in Palestine and abroad. Uh, she's left a strong mark on all of us and this is what we, we would like it to be stronger even in the mm. future and carry on with her legacy. Mm. And Vera, in the occupied West Bank, Tell me what the feeling is like on the streets on this anniversary of Shireen's death. It feels like uh, a national, uh, a national mourning day. Um, everybody, it's not just journalists, but especially journalists. Um, we came together uh, to put uh, to lay the cornerstone for uh, the museum Jalal spoke about. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very exciting initiative and project, but it's very sad that we're doing it after a year of her killing. Um, the wound is still as fresh as if it happened yesterday. I can't remember a single conversation with my fellow colleagues and journalists and uh, photojournalists without m mentioning Shireen, mm. even those who don't know her. Uh, her legacy goes beyond the people who knew her. Um, and it's very, very hard. Uh, I can't even put it in words. Yeah. Uh, today, um, at the... Um, mu sorry. At the museum, um, uh, laying the foundation for the museum, mm -hmm. um, we, would gr we greeted each other without even cracking a smile. It was mm. too hard to smile. It was too um, painful, really, uh, to just imagine that a year went by without anyone being held accountable, right. despite multiple independent and international investigations that concluded that an Israeli sniper shot and killed Shirin. Right. And Maram, you, you're coming to us from Gaza. It is a very difficult time right now in the Gaza Strip, and yet you are also uh, remembering 
uh, the memory of Shireen. How are people feeling on the streets right now? Um, yes, Heidi, this day was uh, very special. Um, but uh, I can say that as a journalist, uh, I marked the day of Shireen by just being, uh, like just doing what Shireen has used to do uh, uh, when she was on the field. Uh, we, commemorate, we commemorated this day by uh, reporting and going uh, into the field, uh, you know, writing and filing the stories, listening to the uh, voices of people who were who are victims and uh, they were who were killed and injured uh, by Israeli airstrikes uh, that are ongoing uh, until this moment. Uh, so we are entering the third day of uh, the uh, latest Israeli uh, escalation on the Gaza Strip. And this is, you know, this time is very tense. It's very, uh, it's full of, uh, you know, stories and this uh, stress, uh, stressful moments for us uh, as journalists uh, who are, you know, obliged to stay in the field, um, you know, following the news and the chasing, you know, the uh, the airstrikes that are, you know, uh, that that hit Gaza, uh, uh, you know, across. Uh, the, that hit across the, the Gaza Strip. Um, just, you know, we are doing uh, what Shireen used to do. Uh, um, she, she was in the field. Uh, she, she was always there to perform her, her job as a journalist. Right. Um, and uh, maybe marking the day uh, of her, uh, you know, assassination by being in the field is uh, another response to the Israeli occupation that uh, no one will silence or, uh, you know, uh, will silence the, the Palestinian voice or the Palestinian journalist's voice. And continuing that job, Shireen, absolutely, Maram, continuing that job is an incredible tribute to Shireen. And we will ask more about just how difficult that job has become for you all. But first, I wanted to turn to Doha as well, because Shireen was a dear colleague at Al Jazeera for many years. And this is how she was remembered at the network's headquarters. It's been one year since Shirin was assassinated and it feels like we are still grieving because justice has not been made. We are here to reiterate the justice needs to be made, not just for Shirin, for every journalist killed, Al Jazeera's journalists, but other journalists. We saw how journalists killed in Ukraine are treated differently. Two days later, a criminal international investigation is being done to seek justice for them. That's not the case for Shireen one year later. And she is an American citizen as well as Palestinian. We're here to remind the world that we will never relent from seeking justice. And Jalal, it was in December that Al Jazeera submitted the formal request to the International Criminal Court to open an investigation. And really, we have had no updates. We believe there has been no action. Can you tell me? if there's anything you know or on the updates of the other investigations into Shireen's death? Um, this is the unfortunate part. Um, there has been an investigation opened by the FBI for Shireen being a U.S. citizen, uh, but there's been radio silence by the U.S. government, by the, the administration. Uh, you know, radio silence after having made vague promises, perhaps, or not even promises, vague statements saying they will follow up with their investigation. So there's not much hope. And the family of Shireen recognized that uh, the path of justice will be difficult and they need to be persistent, uh, whether it's in the US or going to courts in Europe. The International Criminal Court had three um, uh, complaints sub submitted, one by Al Jazeera seeking justice for Al Jazeera journalists and the offices that were bombed by Israeli air, uh, airstrikes in Gaza. Uh, another uh, court, uh, case by the Palestinian Press Syndicate, which is calling for justice for Shireen and all Palestinian journalists who have been killed by Israel uh, in occupied territories. And a third one submitted by uh, uh, the, the Palestinian Authority, which is also seeking justice for Shireen. There's not been much progress on this international justice front. But 
it does not mean that we stop being persistent in seeking justice and accountability for Shireen's killers. Uh, no matter where they are, they could be right now shooting more Palestinians, killing more Palestinians. We don't even know who the soldiers are. This justice needs to be served, and this justice is necessary to stop future killings of journalists and for to stop future killings of Palestinians. Yeah, I would say there's been a lot of impatience and justifiable impatience from journalists across the world uh, why it's taking so long for action to be taken. I want to bring in another voice from our community, Alice Spiri, who is a reporter with The Intercept. Shirin Abuaka was one of hundreds of Palestinians who are killed by Israeli forces each year, including many journalists. But she was also one of several American citizens who have been killed by Israel with no consequence. In her case, for the first time ever, the U.S. government eventually launched its own independent investigation. But that only came months after she was killed and after a large-scale pressure campaign, including by members of Congress. While the FBI investigation is ongoing, it shouldn't take such an effort to get the U.S. government to do something, to get accountability for the killing of one of its citizens, particularly by a country whose military the U.S. funds to the tune of billions. Billions indeed, $3.8 billion a year in security assistance from the U.S. to the Israeli state. And this is causing, um, like I said, some impatience and really aggravating um, advocates for the press. Here in the U.S. on May 3rd, uh, across the world, in fact, it was World Press Freedom Day, and we saw the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, on stage, who was interrupted by this exchange. Two hours and not one word. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy, guys. Not one word about journalist Shireen Abu Akhli, who was murdered so, by the Israeli so, occupation forces in Palestine. So watching that, I, I'm sure that uh, you might feel some compassion, you know, for those who are demanding answers immediately, and that doesn't seem to be happening. Maram, are you still feeling hopeful um, that one day soon Shireen will finally see justice? Uh, actually, no. Um, I'm, I'm not hoping any justice from the Israeli side. Uh, um, it's not about Shirin. Uh, it's it's about her Palestinian identity, her Palestinian nationality. Um, uh, we realized after Shirin's killing that uh, no Palestinian is an exception in front of the Israeli fire. Uh, paramedics, uh, children, teachers, uh, Palestinians from all the spectrums are under the Israeli fire. And um, no one will follow up their cases in the international courts or by the international organizations. Um, every case, uh, just like Shireen and other Palestinian journalists who, journalists who were killed, um, and, um, you know, they are protected by the international laws or support supposed to be protected no none of them uh you know were uh you know um you know none of the israeli soldiers or the, none of the israeli occupation forces uh, were held accountable right. for committing any crimes and so the, the three of me, you I, there's no I, the three of you are are supposed to be protected as journalists from international law but you might have a different experience, specifically, you know, after the most far-right government in Israel's history was elected. So, Vera, I want to ask you, how does that make your job more difficult? What are the daily concerns you have to think about before you walk out the door? Uh, being killed, mm. really. Uh, for me and my uh, colleagues, every time we go in the field, uh, not just to clashes, it could be a normal field day, uh, we might take a wrong turn, uh, we might get uh, too close to something that the military doesn't want us to see, uh, or we might be covering a protest like the flag day, the, or what they call uh, Jerusalem day, by the far, uh, by the right-wing Israelis. Um, I remember being among uh, me and other journalists covering that at Damascus Gate uh, in uh, East Jerusalem. Being uh, they spat at us, they hit us with the flags. 
um, and that's just to name uh, a normal protest coverage. Uh, imagine if we what happens when we cover um, uh, clashes, mm -hmm. uh, when we cover army raids, like the one Shirin uh, was killed at mm -hmm. during. Um, and uh, imagine just like the daily um, uh, uh, the daily calculations that you have to take. Um, some journalists are freelancers. Uh, yeah. We all know that vests and helmets don't actually protect us. Uh, and some journalists just, if, especially if you're a freelancer, right. uh, maybe you don't rent the full uh, or you don't have the full gear, protective gear. Yeah. Uh, Shirin was wearing full protective mm -hmm. gear and still she wasn't protected. She was right. shot and killed. So right. all these calculations come mm -hmm. into uh, account each time we uh, pick the door. Yeah. Jalal, you want to jump in there? Yeah, if, if I may uh, just interject with a bit of perhaps uh, optimism, um, the, the, the assassination of Shirin does have a, a shilling effect on uh, Palestinian journalists, but something Palestinians know when they go out in the field is that there, nothing about being a journalist, even though it's supposed to, but it doesn't protect you because the Israeli uh, soldier looks at you, the Israeli settler looks at you, and you're Palestinian in their eyes. You're an enemy. It doesn't matter if you're a journalist or if you're any any other sort of Palestinian. Um, so this is something we know, and I believe that uh, with with Shireen's killing and the fact that it's it's brought so many people together and it's mobilized many people, I've, I've witnessed some incredible moments over the past year, hmm. moments of unity, moments of strength and bravery. And I've heard from young uh, media students who are studying media, who've, who've met Shireen in the past and who are even more inspired and more insisting on carrying on, carrying on with Shireen's message to Absolutely. give pe the people their voice to speak and approach the people and tell the story of Palestine. And I think Shireen has also left an inspiring mark on all those budding journalists who are willing to go into the field with this uh, strength and inspiration that's that thanks to Shireen, yeah. of course. Maram, is, is Jalal talking about someone like you right there? Uh, actually, you know, um, um, Shirin's death pushed us uh, more and more to do uh, more stories about Palestine and, uh, you know, to find more stories and to, to have the same strength and to, the same faith that Shirin uh, had in her life. And, you know, I can tell that, you know, many of Palestinian journalists working in, working in Gaza get, got affected by her death and got moved by her legacy. And uh, they continued to, to, to fight until getting the truth and until, you know, uh, passing the message to the audience and trying to do the best of the best in, 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 their, in their job. Because they saw that uh, a bit and a senior journalist like Shirin, who was killed for the sake of the truth. So it's it's also it would be the fact for every Palestinian journalist. You have uh, to do it just to go ahead and face uh, the and to be like a brave in front of uh, you know in front of the fact and uh, of passing the truth to the uh, to the uh, to the community you are reporting to. Yeah, you're really on the front line there. And, and um, Mira, I know that Shireen was one of the reasons you even pursued this career in journalism. Can you tell me a little how you are carrying on her legacy? When, when, uh, when uh, Shireen uh, was killed, I started hearing from uh, uh, a lot of people in my generation, whether those who went into journalism or not, that she inspired them during the Second Intifada uh, to be um, more determined to seek justice for uh, Palestinians uh, who are living under uh, occupation. Um, Shirin basically shaped uh, my worldview because I was a teenager during the Second Intifada and she was a rising star in a, a very male dominant back then uh, mm -hmm. field. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was, uh, her Arabic was flawless, her, her voice was uh, uh, very uh, captivating and her knowledge, she knew everything about everywhere in historic Palestine, the history, the, the politics. 
um, and she became a pillar of journalism that uh, uh, we all look up for. Mm -hmm. um, her death uh, um, added more determination, not just to my uh, purpose in uh, staying in journalism, also to many, many others, and as Jalal said, uh, to budding journalists who uh, also see her as uh, someone who uh, achieved um, more uh, benefits for the Palestinian cause than any other, any politicians really or other journalists, I would say. Yeah, and certainly there are so many who agree with you. I want to bring in one other voice from our community. This is Haya Abush Kadem who sent in this video from Occupied West Bank. Throughout the year, we Palestinians have tirelessly demanded justice for Shireen. We call on the International Criminal Court to immediately ensure that Israel is held accountable for killing Shireen and for its ongoing systematic targeting of Palestinian journalists. Despite Israel's apparent impunity, our pursuit for justice for Shireen continues as we continue to carry out the work she sacrificed her life for. Well, in the final moments of our show, as we reflect on Shireen's legacy, I want to ask the three of you, what is the key to get some real action toward justice? Jalal. Um, being persistent and not losing hope and not falling for despair, being optimistic for, about the fact that we can together be persistent about seeking justice. Because what the, the Israelis want us is to fall into despair and desperation and lose hope and just accept the situation we are in. We will resist the situation. We will resist the situation they impose and seek justice no matter what. Thank you, Jalal. Vera? Justice will be served uh, for uh, Shireen. Uh, only when we as uh, Palestinian journalists uh, can feel safe leaving the home, our homes, to uh, continue the coverage because Israel wants to silence us, wants to cancel our voices. And our determination to keep our voices heard is the best justice we can achieve. Emma Ram, your final thoughts? Um, actually, even in, in death, Shireen gives us uh, Palestinian journalist lessons. Uh, she was a hero. She was loyal to the truth and uh, to, the, to her noble message of journalism and her convention uh, uh, to, to convictions uh, in her work uh, and its importance was clearly translated and the sweeping love of people. And this is what we should look uh, for as journalists. Um, and keep talking about Shireen will uh, bring her, her justice one day. And, you know, I want to leave us with um, the latest numbers about just how dangerous it truly is to be a Palestinian journalist. This is uh, from Gypsy Guyenne Kaiser with the Committee to Protect Journalists. Over the last 22 years, 20 journalists have been killed at the hands of the Israel Defense Forces. 18 of them were Palestinian. And the majority, 13 of them, were clearly marked press. It's unacceptable. This situation has caused a chilling effect among journalists who are afraid to go out and do their jobs or must take extraordinary precautions and accompanying risks to do so. We demand accountability. So the fear is there may be a chilling effect on reporters, but to our three guests, I do not believe that is the case. And uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you guys will continue going out on the streets and doing your jobs bravely and extending Shireen's legacy. Thank you so much for joining us today. And that is all of our time today, but you can always find us online at stream.aljazeera.com. Thanks for watching.